Carter family are traveling cross-country to California. Unfortunately, they make the mistake of venturing off the main road, where they encounter another family. A family of desert-dwelling cannibals, that is. They're big hungry, and the Carters look delicious. The Hills Have Eyes, the second feature film from late horror master Wes Craven, was inspired by a 16th century clan of Scottish cannibals who reportedly captured, murdered, and ate over 1,000 people before finally being captured themselves, tortured, and killed. Craven was fascinated not only by the cannibal family and their unique eating habits, but by how the so-called civilized tortured and killed them after being captured. Craven transformed that into a setup that we've seen a million times since in modern horror. A group of city slickers out for an adventure take the wrong turn and end up at the mercy of some out-of-the-way maniacs. The only way they're going to survive is to be more savage than the savages. The Hills Have Eyes is one of those movies that's practically required viewing for any genre fan. If there were a Horror Movies 101, The Hills Have Eyes would definitely be part of that curriculum. Released in 1977, the film still holds up nicely today. Sure, it's a little rough around the edges, but that roughness works in its favor. The Hills Have Eyes has almost the same aesthetic as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's this grim, grainy little movie made by mostly unknowns, full of taboos and common fears that most of us share, but prefer not to share. Craven does a good job of making the Carter family feel like a real family. You've got the gruff patriarch, a retired cop, the mousy matriarch, a son, daughters, a son-in-law, and a baby granddaughter. And you can kind of get an idea of how things work in this family early on. The dad controls everyone. His oldest daughter married a man that he doesn't entirely approve of. The youngest daughter is a girly girl, and the youngest son just wants his old man's approval. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the cannibal family, all named after planets in the solar system, and for a reason. You have Papa Jupiter, named after the largest planet, Mars, named after the red planet, the god of war, he's the family enforcer, Pluto, named after the most distant and oddly shaped planet because he's the most oddly shaped family member, and Mercury, who seems to have drank a little too much Mercury. There's a great sequence in which Mars and Pluto lay siege to the family RV in order to kidnap the youngest daughter and the baby, because as Mars says, You fat! Baby's fat. Fat and juicy. That sequence is pretty brutal, and not just because of the violence that we see or the violence that's implied, but the impact of the violence on the survivors, which is psychologically brutal. That kind of sifting through the wreckage, you don't get with a lot of horror movies. And it makes the hills have eyes feel heavier. From there, the remaining Carters take the offensive and prove that they can be just as cunning, even using one of their own dead family members as bait, and brutal when it comes to preserving their own lives and the life of the baby. The Hills Have Eyes features a strong cast, including a young Dee Wallace and Michael Berryman, whose unique looks made him the poster boy for the film. The Hills Have Eyes, while not quite on the same level as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Halloween, certainly carved its own niche as a standout 70s exploitation film, and for good reason. In 1984, it spawned a direct sequel, which I've reviewed, but we won't discuss. In 2006, The Hills Have Eyes got a pretty good remake, directed by Alexander Aja. And then one year later, there was a sequel to that remake, which we won't discuss. If you haven't seen The Hills Have Eyes, I most certainly recommend it. As far as this new limited edition 4K UHD release from Arrow Video is concerned... First, let's take a look at the presentation. Everything comes inside this sturdy slipcase featuring artwork by Paul Shipper. The slip on the back features the plot synopsis, the list of limited edition contents, bonus features, technical specs, and more. Beneath the slip, we have this image. Here is the case. The sleeve is reversible. On the reverse, we have the original poster art for the film. There is the 4K disc. This release comes with six postcards. A 40-page booklet featuring writings on the film by critic Brad Stevens and a consideration of the Hills Have Eyes franchise by Arrow producer Ewan Kant, illustrated with original archive stills and posters.
and we get a reversible fold-out poster. As far as the picture quality and sound quality, The Hills Have Eyes has never looked or sounded better. Brightly lit daytime sequences have a high level of detail, the skin tones look natural, and the color red in particular really pops. The level of detail and the grain level fluctuate throughout the film depending on whether it's a well-lit scene or a darker scene. Audio-wise, Arrow offers us the option of the original lossless mono track, a 2.0 stereo, or 7.1 audio mix. I'd give both the picture quality and the sound quality on this release a 4.5 out of 5. As far as extras are concerned, first up we have Looking Back on the Hills Have Eyes, a making of documentary featuring interviews with Wes Craven, Peter Locke, Michael Berryman, Janice Blythe, Robert Houston, Dee Wallace, and more. It's 54 minutes and 39 seconds in length. Mr. Craven discusses his formative years, giving up teaching to become a filmmaker, meeting Sean Cunningham, and how the last house on the left led to the Hills Have Eyes. They discuss the locations, shooting in the middle of the Mojave, the cast, working with limited means, how difficult it shoot it was for all with extreme heat during the day and bitter cold at night, uh, the themes in the film, the film's release, its success, its cult status, and much more. Next we have A Family Business, an interview with actor Martin Spear. It's 16 minutes and 6 seconds in length. Mr. Spear discusses auditioning for the film, how cold it got in the desert at night, working with Wes Craven and how great he was. He discusses the fandom for the film, meeting fans at conventions, and more. Next we have The Desert Sessions, an interview with composer Don Peake. It's 10 minutes and 58 seconds in length. He discusses being a member of a meditation group with Wes Craven, and that's how he got the gig on Hills. He discusses the different instruments used to create the music for the film, uh, Craven not being happy with the music initially, and more. We get the alternate ending, 18 minutes and 57 seconds of outtakes, trailers and TV spots, an image gallery, the original screenplay, and three audio commentaries. The first audio commentary with the cast, the second audio commentary is with Wes Craven and Peter Locke, and the third audio commentary is with Mikhail J. Coven. This is a beautiful limited edition 4K UHD release for The Hills Have Eyes from the fine folks over at Aero Video. Both the picture quality and the sound quality were fantastic. We get some very nice extras and it all comes inside this gorgeous limited edition packaging. Again, if you've not seen The Hills Have Eyes, I highly recommend it. This release would be a great way to introduce yourself to the film. If you are a fan of The Hills Have Eyes, this release is a must. Let me know your thoughts on The Hills Have Eyes down in the comments section below. And while you're down there, let me know if you've already picked up this release from Arrow and your thoughts on it. And let me know what your overall favorite Wes Craven film is, too. If you are in desperate need of your very own bad Michael Myers mask, you're in luck, because I'm currently doing a 50k subscriber bad Michael Myers mask giveaway. Follow the link in the description and see how you can enter to win your very own bad Michael Myers mask today. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you all out there are having a great, safe, healthy, happy, and horror movie filled holiday season. Take care, and until next time, peace. A huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members. I greatly appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and get early access to videos, have a say in what movies I review, and join me for patron-only live streams. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.